Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Carlick with Flying and Eating. Today, let's go somewhere and do something. And make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hey guys, it's Adam here. On the last few episodes of Flying and Eating, we made our way out to the CNMI, which is the Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands, a U.S. territory down in the Pacific, somewhat nearish to Japan. Specifically, we went to Saipan, the most populous island, as well as Tinian, which is historically uh, famous for being where the Enola Gay took off and the atomic bombs came from there. Today, we are still on Saipan, and we're going to make our way out to Guam. Good morning, half a day. It's day seven, I believe, technically. Uh, right now, all I'm gonna do is simple morning thing. We're just gonna go over and get to get coffee at Ete Cafe. Uh, there are, of course, a bunch of other coffee places further up in the Garapon area, but this is like a five minute walk from my hotel, so it's a logical choice. Uh, maybe then I'll try to show you a little bit of the mall just so you guys can see that. My coffee was good. Now I'm just gonna do kind of a morning walk around, get a little exercise, walk off some of the sugary coffee, which I don't normally do, but here I felt like doing it. Uh, and again, I'm in the Garapon area near the Galleria Mall. Maybe we'll hop in there. But uh, again, just a reminder, like if you were ever here and you're in the downtown area, this is the downtown area. So this is where all the nightlife is. This is where all the merchant stuff is. This is where you can be able to buy things whenever you want. This is your Vegas Strip type of area. This is, this is everything. So we're gonna go look at a couple of touristy things. Maybe we'll find something interesting. So these are kind of cool. I've never had these, but they're ginger snap cookies. These are actually made in Saipan, and they make like a big deal about that. Support local, and I guess they're mostly done by, I don't know, this lady? But uh, yeah, that's cool. Different flavors and stuff. Very neat. You gotta be careful. Like the Chamorro stuff, not that this is bad, but it's made in Guam. It's not actually made in Saipan. I like to find stuff, you know, as in the place it's actually made in. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's especially made in Hawaii, like of course Hawaiian coffee and all that. But, uh, you know, if I wanted Hawaiian stuff, I'd be in Hawaii, you know? So this would be like the local brand. This would be Hawaiian. Mariana's is this area. One of the cool things about this is this is one of the few parts of the United States that can actually grow its own coffee. So this is truly made in America in the way most coffees are not. Uh, the only parts of the U.S. that can is Hawaii as well as most of the territories. So Puerto Rico, the U.S. Virgin Islands, Guam, the CNMI can all grow coffee. I don't think American Samoa can, but I'm not sure. So you can also get a bunch of merch. Of course, you've got mugs. A lot of these are Hawaiian. Some are Saipan specifically, which is, this is interesting because it's the Hawaiian style license plate, but it says Saipan. Uh, some are just generically the whole area. Some are for Guam, etc. Uh, we also have the calendars. Yep, you get it. Uh, but you know, that sort of merch you can get around here. I like these. These are fancier. And look at this. This is a great water bottle with an awesome, this, you know, the Marianas flag on it. Commonwealth of the Northern Mariana Islands. Uh, they were kind of explaining this to me. So the, I call them the cups because I'm stupid. I admit it. I don't remember the name of the thing back there. But that's like a, a Chamorro thing. That's like a structure to hold up, a, you know, ancient housing. Uh, then the wreath, which symbolizes... I'm not, I don't really remember, but <laughs> I do remember the star. The star is actually uh, put on there because it represents when the American army liberated uh, the, these islands from the Japanese. Oh, this is interesting. So they have a whole bunch of golf balls and stuff. I found this out yesterday. Apparently there are six, six different golf courses on Saipan alone. They really like golf out here. So if you're into golf, this would be a good series of courses for you. So I'm no expert in this, but uh, my buddy Brett was telling me once there are special Hello Kitty dolls throughout all of Japan that are thematic for different locations. I found out there are actually specific ones made for Gu uh, Guam, Saipan, possibly some of the other islands, but definitely these two. So if you're into Hello Kitty, this is actually a special variant you can only get here. Maybe I just missed it, but when did Hawaiian Punch get a cotton candy flavor? What is happening? Okay, so these got my attention. Those are apparently sodas, pepper flavored sodas. I looked a little bit at that. It's not a joke. They're very, very hot. And I was like, is that a local thing? I have never seen that before. It is not. It actually comes from my, the town of my birth, Reno, Nevada. Yeah, I, I was born in Reno, Nevada. Whoa, who remembers Warhead Candies? They have a soda here? That's awesome. I've never, I've never seen this before. I mean, you know, uh, it's manufactured. It comes from Florida, but uh, did anybody out there ever see this before? I have never seen this. There's a political joke in here somewhere about a flip-flop politician whining about something. <laughs> 
So one of the coolest things about being in a, in a part of the U.S. like this is geographically, obviously, you're not close to the majority of the country. So they still have all the American stuff. They also get obscure American stuff, as we just talked about. But you also get a lot of stuff from other countries you don't normally see on the mainland. So like this, I've never seen this before. It comes from South Korea. There's tons of stuff like this, especially from Japan, but all parts of Asia. But then even brands I've never seen before. Like this comes from Wisconsin, <laughs> but I've never seen it before. Uh, I just think that that's really neat. That's one of the coolest things about you know kind of grocery shopping around here is you'll find a lot of stuff like that so we've got coffee sections now as we mentioned this is the local brand one these are brewed here or sorry they're roasted on saipan specifically but they don't mention being grown which basically tells you they weren't actually grown here now where they were grown i don't know it doesn't specify but at least once they got the beans they roasted them here so you got to kind of pay attention to stuff like that because sometimes it'll say like where it came from and sometimes it'll be intentionally vague i think they found some sort of korean cereals korean specifically uh popcorn granola but post makes it which is what's throwing me off the spam stereotype had to be true <laughs> macadamia <laughs> macadamia nuts that are spam flavored the stereotype had to be true hawaii seal of quality even though we're not in hawaii uh, <laughs> uh, sack sack uh, <laughs> yeah sack sack <laughs> So I got a little more information about this uh, yesterday when we went to Tinian's. So Tinian's big thing is these red peppers. Um, so this is like a condensed version of it in the form of like a sauce and, you know, powders and all that sort of stuff. We didn't try this because we just weren't there long enough, but apparently this is super hot and this is like what Tinian grows. So that's very, very local. Okay, now it's time for some food. I'm at a place called the Him Himawari Restaurant. Uh, Glenn recommended it. Mike's going to be joining us. Well, look who just showed up. A little late, but that's all right. We're going to hang out. We're going to have lunch. Then you got to go back to work like an adult. We don't have to work. That's nope, pretty no, cool. No, yeah. Okay, our food has arrived. We're going to start with you. What you get, man? So this is the bento lunch with uh, chopped, uh, they're called beef fingers, but it's basically bonus ribs. Okay. Uh, some fish cake with chicken karage, and I think that's a potato croquette with some Japanese pickles. Maybe add them on like... I've actually had those. They're not bad. <laughs> and then some sashimi... And some white stuff. White rice. White yeah. stuff. Yeah, you enjoy your white stuff. <laughs> All right. what, what do you got? Well, I got the, um, Yours looks crazy. This is the giant shrimp tempura. Look at that. Look, look at that. Look at how big it is. Giant yeah. shrimp tempura on rice. It looks good, man. Yep. And then you got a nice little plate of sushi. A little uh, sushi for my you know, sushi craving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Meanwhile, I got some udon. I got a little sushi plate, I got a salad, and I got uh, finadeni, which I think that to, in order to make this local, I have to just pour finadeni into my Japanese food. Then it's officially local, right? Yes, Back me up on this. Yep. Just say yes so I feel cool. Yes. Yes, all right. All right. <laughs> I poured the finadeni all over my sushi. As you just said, I have made chamorro sushi. That is fusion right there. Hopefully I don't regret this mistake. It's not a mistake. It'll be good, I promise. To me, I'm promising myself. So we just came out of Himawari. What do you guys think? Good. Delicious, delicious. Yep. Oh, yeah. Very good. good I, shrimp. I like using the finadeni to just make my, you know, chamorro sushi Japanese fusion. It was the sushi was really good once it had that on there. I think it was fantastic. And the udon was kind of just okay until you put that finadeni on there. Then it's bomb. bomb. Yeah, go in there, put finadeni on everything. I put it on everything when I'm yeah. out here. It's great. Even on sushi. Yeah. Now you have to leave. You have to have a job. You yeah. suck. We're yeah, gonna go yeah. hang out and have fun. But we'll see you in like four hours. All right. Well. All right. See you in four hours. Give me, give me. There you go. See see you later. Later. Where are we at? What are we doing? So we are at the Grotto. The Grotto. Up in Marpy, north side of the island. Okay. This is a very, very popular dive site. It's actually a cave dive. Um, you'd have to be somewhat advanced certification to dive here, but it's so beautiful. I believe it's ranked within the top 10 on uh, the world as a dive site. Really? Yes. So is it down there or is it up here? I, you... So we, we, you can come up here and uh, look down. Okay. Walk we'll around. do that. You can also walk down and get right there. Look at this ridiculous view of the water, the trees. So down in there, people go diving? Yep. So they'll go down, uh -huh. and there's a cave, and you go out. It goes out there. Oh, it goes out into the open ocean. Yes. That's cool. Yep. How much of it can we see like by just walking down there? And you might see like where the cave starts. Be like light. All right, we're gonna do it. We're gonna brave our way down there and see what we can see for you guys. If you're into like nature and hiking and stuff, this is more probably your speed. I'm fat, so this is not normally the thing I do. So I hope you guys appreciate the sacrifice of me burning a few calories for you. Just a heads up, this is a very steep staircase. 
Uh, so be very careful when you're actually on this. They've got railings and stuff. I'm just saying it's a little more intense than you would think. So this is what you'll see when you arrive down here. And uh, you can see there's actually people already partaking. But, uh, you know, it's a cave type of thing. And uh, you can see there's stalactites up there. And yes, that's the correct one. Stalagmites are the ones that grow up because they might eventually reach the top. And stalactites are the ones coming down because they're hanging on tight. That's how I remember that. Yeah. It's a little wet. Be careful when you're walking around. So I'm going to make some video game references here for people. The way the caves work, see there's like a light area back there. It's You can swim down there and then you swim up and out on the other side. If anybody's ever played the Far Cry games, uh, this is going to feel very familiar to you. <laughs> This is amazing looking though. So where are we now? Mango 6 Cafe? Yep, we're gonna get our coffee fix for the day. Yeah, I need coffee, dude. Yep, yep. So you guys have a lot of coffee shops. Dude, there is a lot yeah. out here. Just popping up everywhere. Well, I'm good. It's yeah. good, because I really like coffee. Yes. So what's that out there? That's Forbidden Island. So what's the deal with that? Uh, it's just a little island. Um, is it forbidden? It's not forbidden. You could go down there and swim and hike it and whatnot. It looks like, how would you even get down there? There's a trail. Oh, there is? There's a trail going down there. It's a pretty uh, rough trail. It's very steep. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful view though. Very beautiful. Yeah. Yep. So like, is this, are we on the north side or the south side? This is the east, we're the, southeast. Are, we're like the southeast yeah. of the island. Yeah. That's cool though. Yeah. That's such a nice view. But yeah, they have these signs everywhere that say like, hey, proceed at your own risk. People have like died trying to go down there. So this is about as far as we're gonna go because I mean, you're in shape. I'm not. I'm not going to bother. I can barely do those stairs from earlier, man. Yeah, we'll save this for another day. Yeah, we'll save it when we come back looking like Schwarzenegger. We'll have a helicopter drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we have machines that can do this for us, yeah. then you'll see it. So I thought I would just stop for a second and show you guys this is a USPS post office because uh, again we are in America so the United States Postal Service operates all over the place here. Very cool. So they also got some of these like older logos. Look at that. But that's neat. So we decided to stop and look at another like World War II um, uh, monument as it were. This is from the Red Beach Night Attack which apparently was the first major tank battle in the Pacific War. Happened right here, right where we are right now, like right out there. This is actually the area there are like tanks that are just kind of sitting out in the water still. Uh, and then they have an example of one over here. Uh, obviously a very decommissioned old Japanese tank. This has clearly been repainted and stuff and it has Japanese flags on it. But uh, this is an actual World War II Japanese tank that would have been probably pulled from the water. Uh, but yeah, there's there's still a bunch of these just kind of seeded throughout in the water uh, that we've shown you before. But that's really cool. So that's, that's one thing I really like about the U.S. is that, you know, it keeps stuff like this to preserve history so that we don't forget that this kind of thing happened. So inside, if you climb up, which you can easily do, it still has the original engine in it. This has been painted over multiple times, you can tell, because it's probably all rusted over and stuff. But, yeah, actually just it being here is really very neat. You can kind of, you know, see inside. It's still some of the original Japanese writing in there. Guess who's back? Back again. Yeah. Mikey's back. Tell his friend. It's Glenn. Anyway, uh, so we met up with your but we met up with your friend Marsha. Yes. Just yeah. randomly encountered because yep. this is what happens here. Everywhere we go, he's the famous one. Other than the pilot, the pilot recognized me from Tinian. That was my only one. <laughs> Everybody else knows Glenn. So we met up with Marsha, and she invited us all to her house for dinner. Yep. So that sounds like that's what we're doing. You excited about this? I can't yep. wait. Yeah. Yep. Let's get free food's also good. Yes. Like that part. Okay, so we're out now, and we found out what's on the menu. What are we getting? Coconut crab. That's number one on the menu right now. Okay, and we also got a fish. Mm -hmm. What's what's going on with all this? That's gonna be the mahi mahi. If you guys don't know what it is, it's also known as dovin fish. So I, I, we know mahi mahi is on the mainland. It's a, it's a fish. It's we're gonna eat it sashimi style, right? Yes. Okay. Now what's the deal with blue crab? Not blue crab. What is it? Coconut crab. Coconut. What crab? What is the deal with coconut crab? It is. It is not only is it like one of the more rarer delicacies that you can get out here in, in the CNMI. It's also just like the richest, most, the best tasting. It's not seafood, because, but it is a land crab. So it does have that seafood quality to it. And it's really, it's really exquisite. It's, it's hard to explain, but it is 
We're hoping for a very them. succulent meat. Mm-hmm. That's a good word choice, I think. Or something oh, yeah. Like that. So you cook it in a whole bunch of stuff, a bunch of you know vegetables and things, and then you put in uh, like coconut milk that goes with mm-hmm. it. You let it cook for a while, and then you just enjoy yourselves. Is yeah. that about a fair assessment? Oh, yeah. Is this, like, this, this is a big island thing. This is a big thing you guys do here. Oh, yeah. It's almost ceremonial once, we have, once you see coconut crab on the menu. All right. Well, mm-hmm. let's, uh, let's go. What I'm doing is I'm going to dump in the onion. <laughs> that onion is really good. Garlic. You know, mine is quite popular in Hawaii. Yeah. And the wine is out there. Oh, yeah. Mine. If anything, that's good work, huh? No? I use the Himalayan salt, so... You know. I don't know how. Oh, the pink salt. But yeah. maybe yeah. in Ohio they don't have. Pepper? I've never been, but um, no one goes to Illinois. <laughs> so, and that's why American food is full of yum yum. Corn flour. Oh yeah. So I break the. Yeah, like I think eighty percent of the cro- corn crops in America is like not in mm-hmm. it doesn't go to corn like consumable corn. Yeah. That's true. It yeah. Go, yeah, it goes to um, animal feed. Then we let it sit. Then relax for maybe 10 minutes. And then we dump this inside. Got it. Looking forward to it. So fancy, by the way. Uh, very rare soup uh, being prepared by none other than Marsha here. It is a rich coconut based soup with some um, green onion, uh, regular onions, black pepper, a whole bunch of stuff. I can't tell you because it's a secret. Secret of the islands. And then <laughs> local uh, sweet potatoes. Yeah. These are a special blend too with eggplants, with uh, coconut cream, and other secret ingredients. And then, of course, you saw that. That uh, mahi mahi earlier, Glenn reduced it to its most basic <laughs> meat state. <laughs> meat state. Yeah. And Very then nice. Finadeni. Finadeni. This is a different version. It's for seafood. Ooh, cool. Mm-hmm. Looking forward to it. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. So what's this? What's what's going on here? So this is actually from uh, once a year. A sacred rain falls on okay. the islands. Okay. All right. I'm learning. It comes down as diamonds. Okay. But no, it's just white rice. Oh. Short, it's short grain white rice steamed inside this very expensive. So, so you uh, lied to me. That's what I'm still doing. That's a hot pot. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. So this is the best part of the coconut crab. Hands down. The thorax part? Mm-hmm. The abdomen too. Especially the you see that? This is a coconut butter right here. Mm-hmm. The only thing you don't eat is the um, this gooey stuff. It's the intestine. Yeah. The black one. I know, but you, well, you can still eat this one, but I wouldn't eat it. I know the black one, the rest you eat. Mm. <laughs> oh, look at that. That. All meat. Meat and fats. Look at that one. That's why they're hunted. That's what she said. Oh Lord, this you can suck on this. That's what she said. This, this, ooh. All meat. Nice. Gold. <laughs> so I just got back to my hotel, and uh, man. Huge shout out to Mike and of course uh, to Glenn for bringing me back here Uh, and big shout out to Mike because I know you had a lot of fun out on this trip and I'm not going to get to see you again for quite some time. Glenn, I'll see you in the morning when I (laughs) go to the airport. But um, yeah, also I want to give a big shout out to Marsha who made all that food you guys were seeing. She put a lot of work into that and she just kind of pulled that out like... 
we just randomly ran into her on the street and it was like, oh yeah, no, yeah, yeah, okay, let's all hang out and we'll do dinner. And she just, she just really went to town. So that was a really nice experience because I had no idea that was like a big island thing here, at least on Saipan. And apparently it is and I got to experience it and it's a special thing and that was pretty cool. So huge shout out to you. Thank you very much. It was very good food. Good morning. It's day, I think, seven or eight. I don't even know anymore. I'm back at SPN. It's time to head down to Guam and I want to say goodbye to Glenn here. He was cool enough to drop me off, bring me out here. That was yes, a nice one. Yes, so, yes. dude, thank you so much for everything out here, showing me the island, of course, and uh, taking me over to Tinian. Yeah, and we just yeah. we had a lot of fun, yeah, and we're you. we're gonna do this again. Yeah. Do this again. If you ever come out to Saipan, which you should, hang with Glenn. He's cool as. <laughs> Mikey too. Mikey likes it. He's good. <laughs> All right, so I went ahead, checked in, checked my bag, and uh, now it's time to go through security. Again, this is the United States, so TSA is a thing here. If you have TSA pre-check, that works. There is no clear lane, but I think we'll be fine. So just got a t uh, security. Funny thing, this the Sega Pluto, this is the one airport in the United States that always requires me to remove it. <laughs> now I'm going to head over to my gate uh, with Morning, uh, which is a United Airlines route. I don't know if I've, I think I've mentioned this in the past, but in just case I haven't, in case you're curious, United Airlines basically owns these islands. Uh, Guam is a huge hub for them so they have a bunch of random uh, routes out here so they're the only American airline that actually services a lot of these islands so if you frequent flyer of United where you have a million miles or whatever like me <laughs> it's super easy to navigate this part of the world so bonus so just a heads up when you get here uh, even though you're flying in this case from the CNMI part of the US to Guam another part of the US uh, you have to go through a little bit of a customs filter so once you get your ticket uh, you see back there there's a guy who just checks your passport and double checks everything then you end up right back out here they stamp your ticket and basically it just means you're cleared and you're good to go but just keep in mind set aside some time because you will have to go through a little bit of a filter even though you're going from one part of the United States to another part. If you're going to another country, that's basically the same process. It's just pretty easy, especially if you're an American. Here's how you know United is great. Uh, our flight was delayed a meaningless half hour. They brought out the snack cart full of free water bottles and chips and cookies and crackers and that sort of stuff for the minor inconvenience. <laughs> Quality airlines. Don't pick garbage airlines, for real. Don't do it. We do not have them available on board the aircraft. We did available in the Customs and Agricultural Area, uh, baggage area. I'm back. I'm back on Guam. Much excite. Uh, flight was good. No issues there. I think that I don't have to do customs again because we were just we just did it. It's, it's been a year, but the thing is, last year pandemic stuff, they were doing extra things. This year, it kind of looks like we're just back to being chill about it. So cool. I would go here, the United Club Lounge, but it appears to be closed. Disappointing, but that's okay. Um, so we're not gonna be here for very long I just have to go pick up my bag and then my buddy Brian. Hopefully you guys saw him in the video last year uh, Is here to pick me up. Yes, I got a guy on Guam. Brian's the man. If you ever come out to Guam You should hang out with Brian. He's cool. He's way cooler than me But anyway, yeah, so he's gonna come get me and maybe we'll get food I don't really know but I think he has to work. That's how much of an MVP this dude is. He's got work He's still gonna pick me up and drop me off that's a good dude. Just a little bit of a reminder, since this is American soil, but it also is in an odd location, the only domestic flights that are even possible from here, at least currently, is the CNMI, which is where I came from, and of course Hawaii. So if you go through those, the border control, as it were, is a little bit more limited. Most of the flights from here come from Japan specifically, but other parts of Asia, the uh, Philippines for sure, South Korea, parts of China, there might be a few others, but yeah, in general, if you're doing the domestic flight thing like I did, it's going to be much more of a breed, especially if you're an American citizen. Over there is basically border control slash customs check. There's actually, we can't go there, but up the stairs, if you were coming in from another country, that's the more formal border control, like where you would go through, uh, you know, a global entry if, as if you're coming from another country. This is more of a customs check where they like, hey, what's in your bags? You know, that type of thing. 
Um, so it's really the only filter we have to go through. It's pretty simple, especially again if you're an American citizen. But they still have this like form you got to fill out right here uh, that just kind of lets them know, like, hey, what are you doing here? Where are you staying? You know, basic kind of stuff like that. As an American citizen, this is mostly pointless, but they still want you to do it. What's interesting now is usually they would give you these on the plane. They seem to stop doing that, hence this. They just have this table here full of these things, and then everybody has to like fill one out, and there's a couple of pens, and stop doing this. <laughs> we don't need this. <laughs> All right, no problems with customs there, no big deal. And so when you do that, you just kind of exit through this area, as it says, go to the right, and then out here you'll be into the main area where you know you can do car rentals and you can get a cab and all that sort of stuff. When you arrive, you'll be greeted by this, and as you can see, you've got McDonald's logos. Nothing more quintessentially American. <laughs> Yeah, so if you want to rent a car and all that sort of stuff, this is a great place to do it. Uh, Guam is very much a you-need-a-car type of place. It's not super walkable. There are app uh, rides like Uber, except it's not literally Uber. There's an app called Stroll. We might try it again later. Last time I was here, no one was working it. So hopefully this year it's back you know, in operation. We'll see. But anyway, that doesn't matter for us. We're going to go find Brian, and we're going to boogie over to the hotel or maybe food. I don't really know. But you can see like there's local ads for various restaurants. And then KFC Guam, I think I pointed this out once. The A lot of the fast food chains out here, not that I would eat them, they have the local stuff. There's Finadeni, which we were talking about before, but they also come with the red rice and, uh, forgive my pronunciation, Kelagugan. Anyway, local stuff sometimes infused in the fancy stuff. Well, not fancy, it's fast food, but you get what I'm saying. Half a day, welcome to Guam. So right outside here is the uh, pickup location. If this is taxis, it's apps, or if you got buddies on the island, whatever it is, they'll all come right here. Makes it very easy to get around. It's not a big place, but uh, yeah. Also, the weather is amazing today. It's so nice out. <sighs> I'm back in paradise, my friends. Hey, look who's back! It's the real MVP, the real celebrity of Guam. This is this is the best dude on Guam. <laughs> and I got a gift for you. Oh, thank Doritos. You. <laughs> I thought you were going to give me some special degree. No, nothing. Just it's compliments of United because right. my flight Thank is you. you up. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he agrees to pick me up and take me out and, and I give him a bag of Doritos. It's okay. That's fine. Check it out, guys. We got a Guam license plate on the right and a Hawaii license plate on the left. You have no idea the effort it would have taken to get that car here. Wow. He's got to go to work, so we're going to make a very essential pit stop. Where are we going? Coffee sluts. They have moved locations. This is like my favorite coffee place in the world. Hopefully, in this new location, it is still great. You've never been to this one? No. Why don't you do this? It's a small island. What are you doing all day? I'm just not in this area. I'm Apparently. Sorry. Well, we're going to be in this area right now. I'm checking into my hotel. There's a second coffee slut inside this hotel, and apparently as a member or a guest, I'll get 20% off. We're going to go back to a place I went to in the previous series just because a, it's right there. Like, I can see it from here, from my hotel. Uh, and B, I know it's quality. And C, I'm feeling very lazy. Uh, so we're going to see Brian tomorrow. So we'll do some more adventurous stuff. But tonight, I just want to take you guys to the place that had the best fried rice I have ever had in my entire life. The kimchi fried rice specifically. We're going to hit that up. Uh, yeah, that'll be fun. We're not doing any beach stuff today. Like, today's just kind of a wash. It was just a get here type of day. Tomorrow... We'll do the Brian stuff, and then we'll get to the beaches, and it'll all be good times. I'm, I'm, this is my vacation time, guys. Like, uh, if you guys didn't see the previous videos, Guam means a lot to me. Uh, I think it's a really fun place. America's jewel of the Pacific that people just, people never take the time to come out here. Um, and I've, I've, ex I've talked about that extensively, and I understand why it's logistically challenging for a lot of people. But man, this is a beautiful, wonderful place that I highly recommend to my fellow Americans to come check out. You know, it's it's hard to even describe because, you know, I used to say, like, it, you might have this fantasy perception of what Hawaii's like, you know, where it's like all the beaches and, you know, the the, the, you know, the, the, the coconut trees, all that stuff. But everybody always kind of forgets to mention people. Hawaii's got people, too. Guam just has a lot of nice beaches. However, I've been told, even comparing it to Honolulu or Hawaii in general as just a basis of comparison is somehow offensive, whatever. But anyway, all I'm trying to say is this place is great. I love coming out here. You know, last year I did this specifically for my mother because that was one of her last requests is that she wanted to come here one more time, which she never got to do before she passed away. But now it's just a me thing. It's like, 
I feel like that's part of my tradition now. If I can always, if I can come here every January, I will. Especially because January in Chicago is the worst time of the year to ever be there. All right, so this is what we're going to get. The kimchi chahan. That's what I had last time. That's incredible. I had udon, or sorry, ramen last time. It was good, but I, I don't feel like having that much food. So I'm going to have a little side, though. I think I'm going to get some karage. That's actually a surprisingly large amount of it. So we've got some cabbage to go with it, as if we need that. But we've got the chicken. It's basically Japanese fried chicken. And then you have a lemon wedge with it, which we can spray a little bit of juice on for extra zest. Here it is, the kimchi fried rice. Smells really good. Of course, it's got kimchi on it. A little bit of seaweed stuff there, but then all the fried rice underneath. So I just came out of there. It did not disappoint. Unfortunately, I had too much food, so I had to actually fail and come back with a little doggy bag, as it were. But uh, yeah, that was just the... A member berries thing. I wanted to go enjoy that again. So now we're gonna go back to the hotel, and uh, I don't know. I'll just hang out with myself. That sounds bad, but I mean, like, watch YouTube videos. What are you thinking? And that'll do it for part five. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned to part six, in which, of course, we explore Guam, uh, see what the beaches are like, what it's like to vacation there, and yeah, we're gonna go check out the Kmart. Everybody wants to talk about the Kmart, so we're gonna go do that. And when I say we, I mean this guy named Alex that I ended up meeting up with. It's it's a lot of fun. So thank you so much for watching. Please do me a favor, like this video, comment down below, subscribe if you haven't done that already, as well as check out all the social media stuff in the description: Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Discord, Patreon, etc. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all later.